Hey everyone, welcome to Matt's Garage. Uh, you saw me put together the four nine inch rear end for the Bronco, and uh, today I'm going to be doing the front end Dana 44. So let's get started. So this is going to be a long episode. This isn't the kind you want to sneak in while you're like taking a long bathroom break at work or something, all right? Uh, it's going to be pretty detailed too, I think. Curious how I'm going to videotape inside there, but we'll work it out. Uh, I got my stuff laid out here. Uh, I've already sort of cleaned this out a bit. I've cleaned the axle tubes out, so I'm not going to show that, uh, or any of the cleaning actually. I'm going to start by assembling the carrier, so let's get to it. This is the new carrier. I've got the old carrier, but I can't use it because I'm getting 411 gears, so we need to up to the to the new one. It comes with this factory sort of goo on it to prevent rust, and uh, that needs to go. So I'm just gonna clean this up with some parts cleaner here. As with the 9 inch, I'm just going to grab a stone and uh, work the surface. Again, not much pressure, just knocking down any high burrs or leftovers from the machining process. Another wipe. Clean and ready to go. My ring gear. Again, just like the 9 inch, got the Yukon 411 ring gear, complete with the factory schmoo on it. Clean that off, hit it with the stone. What this does is it prevents uh, you from having excessive run out. You don't want it going too much like that because then it's going to change its distance in relation to the pinion teeth. You know, when you do this stuff a little bit, you start sounding like you know a lot. So be careful when you talk to people who sound like they know a lot, because maybe they just know a little bit. Like me. All right, that's ready. There's a lot of oil inside those uh, threads. I didn't use... Um, I used blue Loctite on the um, Ford. I might use red Loctite on this one. I don't know yet. People kind of go back and forth on the Loctite. Some people say you absolutely have to do it, and others people say you don't. So just like everything else, there's no shortage of opinions. Oh, one thing I didn't do on the 9-inch, take a picture of the pattern they got, right? Now, you won't necessarily achieve the same pattern because they use a, you know, a special housing that's all jigged up and perfect. But at least it gives you sort of something to shoot for. This is actually pretty high up the tooth. On the 9-inch, I try to get a little more centered into the ring, but maybe that's just because it was a 9-inch. I don't know. So these are my ring gear parts. There's a washer with each spider gear. I just zip tied them together so they stayed mated. And for the side gears there. Not sure if I'm using the nomenclature right, spider, ring, whatever. You guys know what I'm talking about. Pretty simple mechanism, man. That's all that's inside your carrier. So you get your carrier, take one set of gears. Put them in there. They should just drop right in. Okay. Take your other big set of gears. Drop that in. Okay. Once you get that spider gear into the side here, you want to look through 
and make sure that the washer and the gear are perfectly aligned with the pin. Otherwise, when you go to hammer it in, you're going to mess up your washer. I screwed something up because you can't do it in this sequence. Oh. So what must need to happen is I must need to put both in at the same time. There you go. So that's in now. That's tough work, son. I gotta tell you. That didn't look hard. No? <laughs> that looked like it would be easy. That looked easy to you? That's good. Was it easy? No. It was not easy. I'm just trying to get the holes lined up for this cotter pin or this uh, roll pin. Well, the one sure way to stop your progress in its tracks is to screw up parts you don't have replacements for. <laughs> so this one, you probably can't see, but I, oh yeah, you can kind of see there. I got the ridge when I was punching it through. So exactly what I told you guys not to do, I did. So I'm ordering a new washer. Just a little side rant when I bought this digital caliper from, uh, Harbor Freight had a really dim LED reading, so I think the battery is no good. So I'm putting a new battery in it. Yep, and now it's a nice bright or high contrast LED. So, you know, just put a good battery in there. Come on, just charge me four cents extra or whatever. Now it's perfect. So. Oh well. All right, I got my parts. Back to work on the carrier. Make sure they start their life well lubricated. Why am I keeping the old ones? Because you never know. Okay. I hope this new pin fits in a lot smoother than the previous pin because the old pin was really tight. I don't know if they're designed to be that way or mine just got that way or it's... Cause even in the old carrier, even in the old carrier it was really tight. You know what I'm disappointed about this kit from New Ventures Gear and I mean if Tom's offered this kit I'd, I'd much rather get it from Tom's. I would have certainly gotten here faster. But the kit comes with the two washers and the pin and it doesn't include a uh, a roll pin for lock it's just crazy like why would you make this kit and then not include the roll pin maybe I'm getting too picky in my old age huh yeah, stay off my lawn see how tight that is is it supposed to be like that I mean that's part of the reason why it's so hard to hammer this in and keep it straight you know Try not to make the same mistake twice. Okay, I'm safely past that first washer. This pin's definitely going in easier. What's nice about this, uh, this new bun, see this isn't chamfered at all. And this one is chamfered. So even if you're off a little, the pin should rotate it into place. And I really boogered the end of this up, so I need it. All right, yeah, see that moves freely. That's what that's what you're looking for there. It needs to go in a little further. I'm just going to take the edge off of this roll pin. Focus. I kind of boogered the edge of that roll pin, both edges. So I'm just going to put it on the 
grinder. All right, that's in there. Hey, a tip, if you ever need to get this out, I use a rod, like just regular rod that I, I used for my hangers on my wrenches. I just bought a length of this stuff. And this is great for getting in the other side and punching this out. All right, so that is my spider gear set. They're in there, they're pinned in, and they move freely. That's what you're looking for. So now I can install my ring gear for real. I don't want to pull it in with the bolts, so I'm going to throw this in the freezer and um, warm the the uh, ring gear up with a uh, with a heat gun once this is nice and cold. Interesting, these are really small. The old ones are much bigger. The heads, I mean. If you look at these old um, these old bolts. First of all, they have a shoulder instead of threads all the way through. And the head is much bigger. <sighs> it makes me wonder. You know, they say don't reuse them, but I don't know, stuff like that just makes me nervous. I'm just getting these on here snug and make sure it's pulled up all the way. I think it is, but... Put two opposite each other, and then I'm going to red lock tight the rest, and torque them to spec. By the way, if you watch the Dana or the 4 9 inch video, I did not tighten those in the right pattern. I didn't use a star, I used like a I went opposite opposite and then went one over and opposite opposite. Instead of going like this, I was going like this, like around the clock. So I'm gonna, before I put that nine inch in for good, I'm gonna go back and properly, A, put red Loctite on, and then B, torque them as intended. Torque to spec. There is the completed carrier and ring gear. There is the completed carrier and ring gear. It's a girl. It's a girl. So, uh, yeah. Next video, I'm going to start setting up this Data 44.